on my own being solo. And I have to say that I'm really looking forward to it. 43-year-old British traveler and philanthropist Emma Kelty embarked on a risky kayaking journey along the Amazon River. Her expedition was part of a fundraising campaign for charitable foundations. She hoped to gain media attention upon her return home, which would help raise funds for charitable organizations, especially those close to her heart, including the Cystic Fibrosis Trust and the Education in Africa Foundation, her friends and colleagues reported. The problems for this traveler began even before September 13 when a distress signal was received from her GPS device. Emma's journey was organized by the American company Cerarios, and it raised questions from the very beginning. Most people are still puzzled about what she was thinking when deciding to embark on a kayak trip along the Amazon. Her route took her through uninhabited jungle areas, which are rightly considered as bandit territory in Brazil. At the outset of the journey, she was left alone as her partner backed out, frightened by stories of the complete lack of safety in this unexplored part of the central Amazon. However, the goal set by the British woman demanded incredible determination. As she progressed deeper into the territory, she documented the details of her journey. Apart from the survival challenges and battling the forces of nature, she encountered unfamiliar people armed with bows and rifles. She sought to garner more attention for herself and her journey, so there was no question of discontinuing the expedition. Her close friend, Chris Hall, spoke about Emma, saying, she didn't know how to ask people for money. She could only draw attention to her adventure. It must be said that she succeeded in doing so. Several days before the SOS signal was received from her GPS transmitter, she posted a strange message on Facebook. I will have to take the boat, otherwise I'll be killed. Bye for now. After that, Emma Kelty disappeared. Emma Kelty was an experienced traveler. After leaving the army, where she realized that women wouldn't be allowed beyond the staff tent in active service, Tamsin Rain adopted the name Emma Kelty, her mother's maiden name, and trained to become a teacher. She briefly worked at Nalmead Primary in Tulworth, Surrey County, but left her job two weeks after her father's death in August 2014. Her mother, Patricia, passed away from cancer in 1991. She did not have any money problems. She inherited £675,000 from her father, who bequeathed £2.7 million to his four children. Gaining financial independence and quitting her job, Emma organized an adrenaline-filled rally for herself, from skydiving to ultramarathons. Her first major expedition was along the 2000 600-mile Pacific Crest Trail in the United States, from the Mexican border to Canada. Then, in November 2016, she made her first trip to the South Pole as part of a three-person team. She was preparing for a solo journey to the Pole to become the sixth woman to complete such a solo crossing. But first, she had conceived of an adventurous trip to the headwaters of the Amazon River. If it weren't for the SOS signal from her transmitter, it would have been very difficult to pinpoint her disappearance in this vast jungle area. It would likely have remained an unsolved mystery, and her killers would never have been brought to justice, said Corey's chief of police, Joseph Afonso Barradas Jr. He also speculated that one of her killers accidentally pressed the SOS button after Emma's death. As a result of active searches involving a military flotilla, several suspects were apprehended. Based on their testimonies, the crime scene was partially reconstructed. An unnamed 17-year-old gang member revealed that their gang was paddling along the river when their leader, Gomes da Costa, nicknamed Bay, spotted the tent on Ilia Boyero, where the victim was sleeping. They knew she was traveling alone. The first shot wounded the victim, and she started screaming. He returned to the canoe, reloaded, and then came back and fired again. Emma's body was not found, and in a river teeming with piranhas, caimans, and sharks, it's unlikely that more than bones will be recovered. Detective Abize Mendez from the Cori police stated that the gang severed her neck and shoulders to attract fish and animals with blood. 
This is how they dispose of bodies in this part of the world. No remains have been found thus far. Bay was later shot during the division of Emma's stolen belongings. A phone containing Emma's last photos was recovered. One gang member admitted to selling another phone and a GPS transmitter for 100 reis, 25 pounds. Money, a tablet, and a GoPro camera were also found. 